Stevens-Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal acrolysis are severe cutaneous hypersensitivity reactions. In Stevens-Johnson syndrome, there is typically between 1 to 10 percent of skin detachment. When skin detachment ranges between 10 to 30 percent, it is considered an overlap between Stevens-Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal acrolysis. Toxic epidermal acrolysis is characterized by more than 30 percent skin detachment. Drugs, especially sulfa drugs, anti-seizure drugs, and antibiotics, are the most common causes. Stevens-Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal acrolysis typically begin with a prodrome of fever, malaise, and headache. A rash then develops, most commonly on the face, upper torso, palms, and soles. The rash initially resembles target lesions, but it soon coalesces into large blisters. Nikolsky's sign, which refers to the easy detachment of the epidermis upon slight pressure, is a distinctive feature. The mucous membranes of the eyes, mouth, genitals, respiratory tract, gastrointestinal tract, and kidneys are frequently affected, leading to potential complications such as pneumonia or kidney failure. Diagnosis of Stevens-Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal acrolysis is primarily clinical. A skin biopsy confirms the diagnosis, showing the detachment of the epidermis and apoptosis of keratinocytes. Differential diagnoses include viral exanthems, drug rashes, toxic shock syndrome, staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome, and erythema multiforme. While Stevens-Johnson syndrome affects a smaller area of the skin, toxic epidermal acrolysis involves a more extensive loss of skin, resembling a severe burn and posing a higher risk of mortality. Treatment for both Stevens-Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal acrolysis involves hospitalization, discontinuation of suspected drugs, and intensive supportive care in specialized units such as burn centers or intensive care units. Treatment may include supportive care, cyclosporin, plasmapheresis or IV immune globulin, early corticosteroid therapy, and tumor necrosis factor alpha inhibitors. Mortality can be as high as 7.5% in children and 20-25% to in adults, but tends to be lower with early treatment. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.